Good evening. I've been waiting in the wings for a long time. Uh, before we start, I don't know if some of you heard my name or not. My name truly is Stalin. <laughs> and for those of you who did not hear correctly, yes, it is named after the Russian dictator and mass murderer. <laughs> but I need to put and, uh, things straight up uh, right in the beginning. It just does not reflect my ideology. I was 28 days old when my father decided to name me Stalin, too young to protest. <laughs> and I decided to keep the name because my father did not give much else to me. December 1984, this visual, some of you might remember, by Ragurai, deeply, deeply moved me in ways that would change my life. I was completely devastated by the paradoxical emotion of calm on one hand and doom on the other. I was upset. I was very sad. It moved me so much that I, had, I thought I should do something. So I told my mother that I'm going off for an inter-school sports meet to Nagpur and instead followed a bunch of relief workers to Bhopal City. When I reached there, the, the sting in the eye of the gas and the stench completely made me revolt. I mean, I kind of was nauseating. Um, I don't remember the train ride. Perhaps the visuals were still playing in my head. I have no recollections of how I reached there. I was totally taken aback by the complete breakdown of system, of the response, response system. I survived one and a half days and ran back home. I was 16 years old. But something changed forever. I learned two important things. One, the power of images and personal narratives to move you. And second, that if you happen to be underprivileged, disadvantaged, or poor, then you could be treated as cockroaches. I became a documentary filmmaker later and started making films on human rights issues. Um, I tried to explore and reveal unheard voices, uh, try to bring out perceptions and realities that we are not very really comfortable to deal with. Um, I tried to, to bring out those opinions of people that we consider as unimportant. And I'll share with you a little bit, little bits and pieces of some of the documentaries that I've made. And the first one I'm gonna share with you is a film called India Untouched, a film on untouchability in this country, which I traveled about four years to, to make eight states, four different religions, including, if I count, if I count communism, maybe five religions. Um, across rural, urban, and semi-urban areas. And uh, this is what I found. Huh. This is the beginning of my film. I've edited it really, really shortly. I was standing, uh, I was with my camera, so a bunch of young kids, in, this is in short in Gujarat, a bunch of young kids fo started following me, and they stopped at one particular place, right outside somebody's house, and they wouldn't come inside. And I kept asking them, why wouldn't you come inside? And you can see how old they are, probably six, seven, and eight years old. And they said, we can't come in because the house belongs to an untouchable, a Dalit. Now this, in spite of the fact that the boy who lives inside the house is a close friend of these, these boys. ஊருக்குள்ள போகும்போது கொஞ்சம் ஒரு மரியாதை போகணும்ப்பா பாரம்பரியமாக முன்னால் முதியோர்கள் அதாவது நம்ம எங்களுக்கு முன்னால் இருந்தவங்க வந்து இதில் யாருமே செருப்பு போட்டு போக மாட்டாங்க As if this is short, short in 1912 or something, but this was short in 2007. This is one of the many forms of ridiculous practices that I've captured in the film. 
You know, if you're a Dalit, you can't, you can't put your shirt inside, you can't wear a glass, a spectacles, you have separate tea, uh, teacup systems. You have segregation in hostels, and th for those of you who think that this is a particularly Hindu construct, unfortunately it is not, it's an Indian construct. In fact, it's a South Asian construct. Uh, I have explored in this film how untouchability and caste discrimination is practiced within Christians, Muslims, Sikhs, very, very unfortunately. And for those who are sitting here, you know the situation of the neo-Buddhists in Maharashtra. Um, some of us think that, you know, untouchability and caste discrimination is a very rural phenomenon. Unfortunately, it's not so. I mean, see at the, the, the ease in which we drop our caste names. Like, you know, we drop in conversations who we are. And it's so easy that we kind of carry our caste names with us. Most of our surnames are Kapoor, Khanna, Srivastava, all these are caste names. And we carry that with us so proudly. Now, if you, if you belong to a dignified caste, it makes sense to carry that. It's a, you know, it's a ticket. But if you don't belong to a dignified caste, why would you carry it? So I'll tell more about the urban caste situation a little later. But I'm going to show you someone who I found extremely interesting. He keeps reappearing in my film. He's a Sanskrit scholar from Banaras. His name is Batudat Prasad Sharma Shastri. तो पहली बात हम अपना परिचय दे दें आपको मेरा नाम बडू प्रसाद शर्मा शास्त्री है शास्त्र को आधार मानने वाला होने के नाते मैं कट्टर हिंदू ब्राह्मण हूँ छुआछूत जात पात मानता हूँ मैं छुआछूत जात पात मानता हूँ एंड ही गोज ऑन टू से मेनी अदर थिंग्स नाउ ही माइट बी क्वाइट रेडिकल बट ही फॉर मी एम्बॉडीज दैट पर्सन who is bold enough to admit. Some of us practice, but it's too uncool for us to admit it. And we'll talk about the practice later. Um, I need to refer to my notes, I'm sorry about that. This is Jumar Khan. In 1997, I helped set up a community radio program project in Kutch and trained a bunch of very interesting women to produce their own radio shows. And uh, we decided to launch the radio program by Jumar Khan and his disciples singing. Uh, it's an exquisitely, uh, exquisite singing form called Y, V-A-I. And the form is dying out, so we thought we should, we should use that to um, about 45 minutes into the recording, Jumar Khan and his disciples come out of the studio, and uh, they're all standing um, watching the All India Radio station building, which is where we were recording. And Jumar Khan looks up and says, oh, so this is Akashmani. This is where all the songs come from. I always wanted to be here. And he looks at me and says, thanks to you, I am singing here. He takes my hand. He shakes it and he says thank you to me. He was 75 years old at that time. And if you ask me, he is not to exaggerate, he is, his voice quality and the way he sings, he's truly a world class singer. And I was so upset and so angry that just because these people happen to live beyond our spaces that we describe as cultural spaces or you know, as we describe as India, just because they're not part of that, they don't get any opportunities. I made sure that the team that I trained in Kutch in the 10 years, subsequent 10 years, recorded more than 800 songs of Kutchi folk. <laughs> oh, you may want to clap on that again. I, in fact, it was 800 hours of songs. Um, चले गए पांच सौ हजार में वो टोला बैठे लगा 
हम लोग ने पेट्रोल बंदोबस्त के साथ बैठा था हम लोग नहीं नहीं देखा पेट्रोल के साथ केरोसिन के साथ लकड़ी तलवारों के साथ वो लोग बैठा था जितने उन्होंने इंसान में गया ना वो उन लोग को पेट्रोल छाट छाट के आग लगा दिए उनकी इज्जत लूट डाल उन लोग ने बच्चे रोए बात के लिए तो पेट्रोल केरोसिन केरोसिन पिला देते उन लोग ने अच्छे अच्छे खूबसूरत लोग की झाड़ पे बाल बन के इज्जत लूटे बे सब चला दिए कुछ दम नहीं गया ना इंसान का तो सलिए मार मार के उन लोग को जला दिए भाई बहुत बुरा अंजाम कर लिया उन लोग ने sorry that just came in i don't want to stress you with the horrific visuals that follows in this in this video uh, or with my experiences in 2002 uh, this is perhaps the first time i am in public showing some of this visuals or even talking about it i do feel like sharing uh, uh, because i've understood from presentations earlier that how how important it is to talk about the personal journey as well I spent many months in in Gujarat in 2002, just roaming around, literally like a madman, roaming around with bunch of people in my car every day, going to government offices and departments to make sure that these people who have lost everything, including the record that they exist, we would go to the offices and say, "Please, can you create a certificate, a document that these people actually exist?" I was in other times carrying my camera, shooting, and other times I was digging holes to put. bodies in um i don't think i've ever felt that sort of powerlessness that sort of anger and helplessness ever in my life but one thing that i did not feel is depressed because i had this resolve at that time and i went about in the next 14 months taking a uh, capturing about 100 hours of video testimonies of people most of which were submitted later to the inquiry commission some of it was shared to very interesting filmmakers who made some very important films out of it and to the tv stations and most importantly i edited a small 35 minute video report that was officially submitted to the national human rights commission what you're seeing here is part of that what happened in to the after 2002 with these people you don't need to i don't need to go into details about that there's plenty written and perhaps we know how little has happened there now i am not the only one in this country or anywhere else making documentary films on human rights issues there are plenty more people uh, thousands and there's state television stations uh, and then there is internet and then there is facebook um but there's something essentially missing i feel and I, i'm not talking about you know like oh we are too tired or too bored or tied down with the option of like and unlike or like and dislike buttons yeah maybe that's an issue for some of us maybe we need a button called empathize so that we don't appear stupid when we say this to my dog just died but that's not the missing i'm talking about i think what is missing is diversity and i'm not i'm not talking about diversities of languages uh, that we speak of the clothes we wear or the cuisines we eat or the accents we make fun of or the brands that some of us are loyal to those are probably important diversities but this something that i think is much more important as diversity that is the diversity of opinions of ideas and of voices direct unmediated voice that is what is i think is missing from the general discourse so the last few years we have been uh training me and my fabulous team back at video volunteers have been training about 300 community filmmakers to create their own content their own direct content they create this content and they they talk to the world directly without any representatives like us i'll show you who they are it's important to to know who they mera naam rakesh hai mera naam mukesh hai main gair sain uttarakhand se hu jammu kashmir se hu main adivasi hu i am the dalit women मैं फीमेल टू मैं ट्रांसजेंडर हूँ मैं मकरानी मुसलमान समुदाय से बिलोंग करता हूँ मैं एक डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस की विक्टिम रही हूँ गोवा के खान विरोधी जो संघर्ष है उसमें जुड़ा हुआ हूँ और मैं सेक्शुअल माइनिटीज के साथ ए टी एस से काम कर रहा हूँ ट्राइबल पीपल इन मणिपुर सफर अलॉट इन देंड ऑफ देंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एस वेल एस टी इंडियन आर्मी आई हैव सीन वायलेंस इन दी नेम ऑफ कम्यूनल आइडेंटिटीज देर इज नो प्रोपर मेडिकल फैसिलिटीज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड नॉन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इस बातों को मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया कभी सामने नहीं लाता और पहली बार मीडिया को मेरे ग्रामीण क्षेत्र तक पहुंचाने जा रही हूं।
Now, talking about mainstream media, we, some of us have actually stopped reading newspapers or stopped seeing, seeing uh, TV news, uh, perhaps because we are so tired of the same content uh, 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 repeating all the time. Uh, and if you, if you belong to that category, those categories are saying, like, we, we need to change something. And I believe that if we are interested in changing the content, the what that is being talked of, it is imperative that we change who is doing the talking. Without us changing the profile of those who create content, content is not going to change. Because content is representative of the interests of those who create it. So we believe that these people who live the realities that we are concerned about, when they start creating content, it is a different world altogether. Let me show you a brief compilation of what they are producing. I've cut it very, 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 very fast, just so that I could keep time. मुंबई के जाकिर हुसैन नगर में गटर के पानी से लोग परेशान हैं। ना बीएमसी ध्यान दे रहे हैं, ना नगर से वो काम कर रहे हैं। ऐसे में आम जनता कहाँ जाएगी? किससे मदद मांगेगी? लोगों की मजबूरी बन गई है इस गंदगी के साथ रहना, इस गंदगी को सहना। पैसे वाले लोग भाड़े ने रातिल बिंदास रातिल, गरीब लोग कुड़ रहना। चलना नहीं आता है रात के समय अगर पानी रहेगा तो लोग गिरते हैं उसमें बच्चे गिरते हैं और ये इतने गंदे पानी में चलने से पैरों को छाले हो जाते हैं। Plebiscite means a direct vote by all qualified citizens on an important political matter. United National Liberation Front, one of the many insurgent group in Manipur, wants a separate independent Manipur. People not wanting to voice their opinion is a clear sign that there won't be a positive improvement on plebiscite case. This is the gloom picture of daring to speak your mind in my state, Manipur. हमारे देश में मानवों के द्वारा सिर पर मैला ढोने की और गंदगी साफ करने की परंपरा सदियों से चलती आ रही है। इसमें कुछ विशेष जातियां ये काम करती रही हैं। दूसरा काम मिले तो करेंगे, क्योंकि एकदम गंदा काम है, महकता है पूरा, बदबू देता है। I want to show you one area where women in my community are facing gender discrimination and this area is the church. Women are not anointed with a title of reverend or allowed to become a pastress even though she may be as eligible or more capable than any other male pastors. Plastic dapta dapta kese gusi मेरा समाज है और खास तौर पे जो वाल्मीकि की समुदाय है वह नंगे हाथों से काम करने के लिए मजबूर है यह अमानवीय कार्य करने के लिए मजबूर है गंदगी से कई बार गैस चढ़ने से या अन्य जो गंदगी होती है मलमूत्र अंदर मुंह के अंदर जाने से इन लोगों की मेरे समाज के लोगों की मौत भी हो गई है ऐसा ही वाक्य अभी हाल ही में सामने आया जहाँ पर दो लोगों की मौत हो गई है Now, you might, you might ask, why should we only work with the marginalized communities? Why not everybody? I mean, everybody's voice is important. I agree that, yes, every voice is important. But for us, the voices of those who have been silenced for either political or social reasons, those become the priority. And that's why we work only with the marginalized, marginalized communities. I mean, you could tell me this. Who would be a better person to talk about problems in urbanization than a person living in an urban slum? Who could talk about the, uh, you know, the pains of displacement caused by mining companies than a person living in Jharkhand villages? Who could talk about you know, what it is to be caught between the Maoist on the one hand, the CRPF on the other hand, than a person living in Chhattisgarh? Who can talk about the idea and the construct of nation than someone who's living in Jammu and Kashmir? That is the power of being very, very local. They know these things. And they are not, they, are, they don't have the opportunities, they don't have the technology to do it, and that's what I'm trying to do here. The other great thing about community media and local media is access. 
because the media is there and they belong to the same communities, people who have gone on different tangents are suddenly open to talking to them than the so-called mainstream media. And I'll give you an example. I'll show you a video from Manipur that was shot by our, our uh, community video activist called Daniel. And uh, he was the first media person who was allowed inside an armed insurgent group in Manipur. When you think of insurgencies in Manipur, you perhaps think that there is only one organization behind this. In Manipur, there are dozens of insurgent organizations, all of whom demand a separate state and some even demand a separate country. There are four major groupings, all formed on the basis of identities. So there are armed outfits representing the Maitais, the Nagas and the Kukis. According to Commander Khaling, the United Minority Liberation Army use guns as a way of protecting themselves from other armed outfits that are threat to the minority people. He believes that after they have taken up arms, violence against them have decreased as their opponents are now scared of attacking them. This is the first time that United Minority Liberation Army has agreed to speak with any media or show their activities to the world. They agreed to talk to me because I belong to the same region and so they trust me to tell their story in a correct manner. To find solution to the issue of armed conflict, it is imp very important for all of us to first hear why these organizations have taken up arms. The key to find solution is listening. I am Daniel Mote, reporting from Harman Kem in Manipur for Indian Heart. Now you might, you might think that all the content, including my film and the films that these people are making, are all quite depressing or negative. Uh, I would like to to kind of say that I don't necessarily think that uh, these are depressing. I hope that they create an outrage. I hope that they create an anger because it is important to have the necessary anger to change things. He cannot, you know, you know what is depressing? Depressing would be when you hear someone who says, this is my life and I'm resigned to fate, nothing's gonna happen, that is depressing. I'll give you an example of depressing. My favorite example of depressing, this is depressing. It's across the country, this is what we wake up to Sunday mornings in this country. And it is in interesting that we don't bat an eyelid. We don't think it is wrong. We don't think it is immoral. We don't think that there is something going on here. And that, that inability or the ability to deny an existence of a problem, that is, I would say, depressing. I believe that if one is interested in finding solution to any problem, the first step is to accept that there is a problem. Denial is not the solution. So, thank you. So we have people across uh, 60 locations, 24 states, who are creating this content, and you may wonder very quickly, I'll tell you how it is being used. They make videos and first and foremost show it back to communities because that's where the action happens. It's not just about creating videos to show, it's about creating videos to mobilize communities to create action. These are community activists as well. And then of course it goes to our website. Uh, every day we put a new three minute video on our website and which also goes to Facebook and Twitter, uh, you know, Orkut and YouTube and Blip TV and all the platforms that you can imagine. And uh, आपका वीडियो जो बनाए आपने उसी से हम लोग जाने कि हमारे स्कूल में कितना घोटाला हो रहा है और आगे आप इसी तरह काम करते रहिए आपके काम से यहां का ग्रामीण बहुत खुश है मैंने उक्त वीडियो को संबंधित प्रखंड शिक्षा प्रसार पदाधिकारी को मोबाइल के माध्यम से दिखाते हुए आला अधिकारी को दिखाने के लिए एक सीडी व नेट पे डाला गया आर्टिकल का प्रिंट आउट समर्पित किया 
एवं उप शिक्षकों पर कार्रवाई करने का आग्रह किया जिनके विरुद्ध कार्रवाई हुई है वो पूर्व प्रधानाध्यापक थे तो जिला कार्यालय से उनका तीन वार्षिक विधि काटने का प्रस्ताव भेजने के लिए जिला शिक्षा अधीक्षक द्वारा कहा गया मेरे द्वारा बनाया गया वीडियो आप लोग के लिए क्या मायने रखा हम लोग को इस बार एग्जाम में बैठने के लिए पैसा नहीं देना पड़ा और सिर्फ हमको ही नहीं बल्कि हम लोग का क्लास का सभी बच्चा और स्कूल का सारा बच्चा कल लगभग पाँच सौ छः सौ बच्चा को पैसा नहीं देना पड़ा इससे हम लोग बहुत खुश हैं बट वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट चेंज एंड इफ यू गो टू द वेबसाइट वी हैव डॉक्यूमेंटेड सेवेंटीन थाउजेंड सर स्मॉल इम्पैक्ट क्रिएटेड थ्रू वीडियो एंड फॉलोड बाई एक्टिविज्म सो ट्वेंटी फोर स्टेट्स Uh, India Honor Network is about 60 people. The other people are about 250 odd more people. But this is, I'm not going to rest. This is my target. 645 people. That's one in each district of this country. So this is what, this is the agenda. Occupied. Media, as the Supreme Court judgment says in this country, airwave is public property. 9th February 1995, we received the most amazing judgment that airwave is public property, it does not belong even to the state. So we have to occupy the media. I wish, I wish you would occupy it too. And I know that this is going to create billions of voices. I know that it's going to create billions of opinions and billions of voices. I am willing to be blown by a billion voices. I hope you are too. Thank you. Thank you.